Barcelona and, mm -hmm. and walked with her and saw her drive away. Yes. And then you got in your car and drove away. Yep. And you didn't see anybody else go inside with Shannon or be with her. No. And so the next day, did, did things change? Were you admonished? for what had happened that night with what she said was your mistake or did she even bring it up? Um, nothing was brought up about my mistake that I made, um, you know, even though I don't, I know I didn't make a mistake. Um, it was only, the only thing that, you know, she, her attitude towards me was just kind of like, you know, um, she didn't have time for me, she didn't want to talk to me. Every morning there was a 15 minute stretching session that we had to do and during the stretching thing, st session she talked to Maddie about, you know, how tired was she when she went home and, you know, but didn't say a word to me. Um, and it was just kind of like, you you know, it was obvious that she was pissed off at me and, I, you know, I don't know, you know, I know I didn't make a mistake. so. It, the whole time I worked there, it was kind of a bully, you know, atmosphere. She definitely is a bully, and but it was worse after election night with me. She she just didn't have the time of day for me, and so I don't. Um, yeah, that's that's what happened the next day. Well, and and so in hindsight, when you look back on that, knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. do you think there's any reason more than she was? Um, unhappy with you for supposedly making a mistake. Do you do you think she was purposely um, trying to make your work unpleasant for you, or that maybe she knew? And this is you know, don't let me put words in your mouth, but right. she knew what you had seen. I absolutely think that she was trying to get me to not work in the ele I mean, you know, in her office anymore under the election assessor or any. Any of any titles. Um, I mean, I don't know why else you would kind of bully your employees other than to make them want to leave without being fired. She didn't have a reason to fire me, so her next move was to, you know, get me out of there. And and now it makes, you know, now I would say she knew that I kind of knew too much, and maybe she conceived that my loyalty wasn't with her, that it was maybe with the, you know, the election code and you know my um, integrity and you know my honesty. So I don't know because there were a lot of things throughout my time in the elections office that I questioned with her. Why aren't we sending out, you know, um, notices letting the voters know that they're, you know, um, registered to vote? Or you know, why are we not trying to track down, you know, the people that are, um, you know, had issues with their affidavit cards? Or you know, there were just a lot of things that I questioned, and uh, each day it just seemed to get worse and worse. The, um, I remember, you know, just the phone ringing, I literally just felt sick, like, okay, now what am I going to get in trouble for today, you know, and I remember crying in the back office to Lauren, what, I don't know what else to do, you know, I, I feel like I'm doing my job, and it's like nothing that I do is good enough for her, um, so I don't know why she felt like that, but after election day, it got a lot worse than it was prior, and something that's interesting is after so I didn't put in my two weeks notice, which I, you know, upsets me with myself because that's the professional way to leave some, you know, leave a company. But I couldn't. I mean, I literally was sick to go to work, um, and so I had just called her one morning and told her, you know, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't. Like I am sick to come to work. I don't know. I cry every day at work. I don't like when the phone rings and it says your name because I know it's just gonna, you know, be you telling me I did something wrong. Um, and so she and, said, and this was done on the phone. Mm -hmm. It was it was a phone call, um, and so she had kept asking me um, after that. She said, "Okay, I understand. Um, you know, let's just take a breather and let's talk later and see how you feel." And then she kept, and I just told her, "No, I've made up my decision. I don't want to work there anymore." Um, and she kept trying to say, "Well, let's get, let's meet for coffee, let's talk." You know, she kept trying to be my friend, and oh, we need a player on the softball team. Do you want to play on my team tonight? You know, trying to just kind of, you know, smooth up to me. And so then, uh, you know, then I was just kind of laughing at her because I don't, you know, at that point, I never, I never even thought about talking about, you know, things that I had seen in the elections office. And like I said, I was really, you know, new to the, and I still don't know much about the election, um, you know, code, but what I do know, you know, about it, I, I know that she didn't follow code, um, 
But now that I see, especially now, it, it irks me that she is going to be able to run her own election and to count her own votes. That is driving me absolutely crazy. And, you know, so I'm not doing this as a vendetta against her. You know, I don't have anything against Shanna. I don't like the way that she treats her employees, but I just want, you know, fair is fair. And the election should be ran, you know, by code. And um, so hopefully that will happen. <laughs> well, and I don't know if you discussed the bullying of, um, were there other employees? Did you notice anyone else being bullied or even people in the courthouse that, you know, co-workers in the building itself? Did you ever see anybody be intimidated by her? Um, I never, I mean, nobody else ever seemed to be intimidated or she didn't seem to talk to anybody else the way that she talked to me other than, I mean, employee-wise or co-workers or anything like that. Um, a lot of um, candidates, you know, would come in and if she, you know, wasn't, if she didn't back them, then she just kind of didn't have the time of day for you or um, Tom Fox pulls into the parking lot and, oh crap, here's Tom, like, don't, you know, let me talk to him. She wanted to be the one to talk to him so she could say whatever rude things she wanted to say because I was all for giving him exactly what candidates are allowed to get, you know, where you need any information that's legal for you to have, absolutely, here you go. She wasn't so forthcoming with those kind of things. Um, and, you know, when an observer would pull into the parking lot, it was, it was like, oh, you know, oh, they're back. Or, uh, you know, just, um, I don't remember any specific, you know, lines that she would say, but it was just always, and she absolutely made her um, employees start, you know, and like I told you in the beginning, she made it to where it was like, you guys were a nuisance. Observers were nuisances and, you know, like, oh, there's Mike or there's Kay, you know, and why are they here and what do they want, you know, and she absolutely put rubs off on her employees because she, she doesn't, she never talked about the importance of observers. She only talked about how annoying it was to have people watch you and um, so, yeah, I was the only employee that I saw her bully or intimidate, um, but I wasn't the only person that she did that to. Did you get the impression that she would, that Shannon was making her employees feel that the observers were just a nuisance, but they could have been a threat some way, or trying to get them in trouble, or trying to get them arrested? Did she ever? No, she never. No, I. I mean, it never. I, and I don't know if it's because. I didn't, I mean, I don't know how to say it. I don't, I don't know if I didn't get that impression because I didn't understand how serious it was, you know, what she wasn't uh, allowing the observers to see or not, um, or to see, but I, it was, it was just kind of, she was annoyed and, you know, she didn't want to follow code by um, uh, notifying observers of when we were count, you know, when we were doing anything that the observers were allowed to watch. Um, it was just all annoying to her, is what it, you know, the, what she put off. And after you resigned, did you have any, did Shanna ever contact you, or did you have anyone ever contact you that you felt they were contacting you on Shanna's behalf? No. Shanna was the only one that, you know, kept one. She tried a few times to get coffee and talk and, um, you know, ask to play on her softball team. And it all just kind of seemed like she was just trying to be my friend and maybe, you know, she never specifically said, don't say anything that you saw or, you know, um, but it just, you know, it was kind of like, well, you didn't like me the whole time I worked for you. So why do you want to be, why do you want to get coffee now? You know, you went, she would have lunch with, Julie, Maddie, Kim, you know, but never was she like, hey Cheyenne, let's go to, you know, Red Dragon or, you know, and I specifically remember one time and it, I'm a sensitive person and it hurt my feelings. So I was, um, I think I, I don't know, I had an appointment or something, say on a Monday and on Tuesday when the office closed, everyone was like, okay, see you there. And I'm like, what, where you guys are meeting? And they all had a lunch date and didn't include me at all. And so I was like, after lunch, I kind of, you know, was short with Shannon, didn't really want to talk to her and she could tell that I had been crying. And so she's like, what's, what's wrong with you? And I said, I don't understand why I was singled out. I was the only one in the office not invited to this lunch. And she said, oh, I didn't realize you weren't here yesterday. So you weren't part of, you know, you didn't hear that we were having lunch together today. And it was kind of like, 
no, I'm not stupid. You know, like you just singled me out. You could have used all this morning to tell me, hey, we're going to lunch. Do you want to come? And so that's the atmosphere, you know, that it was working in the elections office. And I don't, I mean, I've known Shannon my whole life and basically my whole life. I went to school with her daughters, Susie and Tiffany, and, um, you know, there's no, nothing has ever happened to where it was like, I don't, you know, oh, I don't like Cheyenne, I'm going to bully her. I mean, she hired me for the position, so if she didn't like me, she wouldn't have hired me, you know, so there was nothing, you know, I don't know why she, you know, treated me the way that she did other than my, you know, hindsight, all I can see is that she saw my honesty and my loyalty, you know, and where, you know, my integrity to myself and, you know, to doing the right thing, so that's the only thing that I can you know, imagine why she would treat me the way that she did. Anything else you want to add? Um, I don't, I think we covered it all. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you.